Greetings and welcome to Rebna Den. I'm Michael Hassenfang and this is episode 10, Prophetic Words Today versus Old. This is falling in line from the previous episode, which was the blending, the unification of the bride, and uh, how I thought maybe the combination of <clears throat> different pros from each denomination would sort of meld in together into one unified bride throughout the world. Just everything that we see and enjoy from different denominations, though I shouldn't say really enjoy because there's a lot of people out there who are part of the church or part of the bride of Christ who don't agree with certain denominations or their ways, uh, as I was expressing before, like with the Catholics, with the majesty of what they see as the visual word as opposed to the spoken word where they're using art and their creation to give a visualization of the Bible as opposed to just um, the word itself, like reading from the Bible, they're giving pictures as well. And I think that's probably from the olden days you know, a millennia or so ago before the printing press and Gutenberg press and stuff like that came out and, you know, they had to read the word to everyone while well, it was probably better through pictures and drawings and art and um, building massive cathedrals to bestow an awe and presence to God, which in general doesn't really need to be there. But at the same time, I think that if God made us created beings, um, as a way to create and give reverence and awe to him. I don't see really much of a uh, trouble in building such things. And there's other churches that strictly go by the word and remove all things. In fact, sometimes I've even been to churches where the cross itself was removed. It's pretty scary where it's just, it looks like a, a padded cell to a, an insane asylum, just white walls and nothing else. There's there's no creativeness whatsoever. It's just strict word and nothing. Um, and I suppose they're probably good at knowing the word. <laughs> it's probably the best way to explain that particular type of denomination. Um, but everyone has pros and cons. And I, I think if we found the things that are calling us and giving glory and worship to God the most through these particular denominations, what they are best at doing, and we sort of meld it all together, I think that is when we will see a better unification of the body of Christ. Um, and one of those things that many churches today, almost all of them, apart from, I'd say, maybe the Pentecostal and a few others, um, really negate on is the gift of prophecy, which is what we're going to be getting into today. A lot of churches think prophecy is done away with, and I don't think so much because we're still here and the earth is still going and God's plan has not reached his fulfillment, so he's still speaking to us even in this day and age. It wasn't for some archaic time where yonder ago God spoke to these people, but now he doesn't speak to anyone anymore. It just seems a little ridiculous if you ask me. And before we dive into it too much, there's a few announcements I should make. One of them is to pray for Israel and everything that is going on in the Gaza Strip right now with the attack from Hamas. We should pray for Jerusalem, Jewish nation, the Israelis, but as well as the Palestinians, because there are many who are caught in the crossfire and many Palestinians who are Christians as well. Um, and even those within Islam, some may have a good heart without a miss, you know, being having a complete misunderstanding of what it is they are doing. And I am one that stands on the side of Israel, not Palestine so much, because of God's namesake, because of his word and his promise and his plan with Israel, he gave that nation to them. And if it's anything that, uh, if there's something I've learned from the Six Day War, it's that uh, no one's going to win against God. So you can attack all you want and you're just going to get stomped out. So I, I hope that they come to this realization and realize that that state is not for them. God made a covenant with Israel. He did also make a covenant with um, the descendants of Ishmael as well. If you read in the Bible, they're going to be you know, sand dwellers and like have a, a nation built up with wealth and prosperity. And I, I think Dubai is a perfect example of that, even though there's a lot of corruption and death that went into building that city, they have a lot of prosperity. 
I mean, all the oil and just the, the wealth that is coming in from that nation, that was theirs and that was the promise God made to them. But they, they want to usurp what Israel has from God. And it's just been a constant battle ever since the days of Abraham, this bro brotherly fighting that they constantly have. And it's never going to end until I believe Christ comes or that Abraham Accord is put into motion, which Trump tried to do in his presidency. Hopefully when he comes back, there'll be some sort of peace. And with Saudi Arabia, they joined into that covenant and there hasn't been a war with them since Trump against Israel. And I think that's kind of pushing against everyone else within the area to where I think they're just, they're, they're going to try and overtake it. And I, I don't think it's gonna work out for them. Um, many prophets have spoken on this and we need to pray into that and declare a decree that all of their plans are going to, it's just, it's going to fall, fall out completely. Um, and I also did this a couple days later, as opposed to me usually recording on Friday nights or so and trying to get it out Saturday because it's a three day weekend for me. The banks are closed and I work at a bank. So taking the extra day and the extra time to just have a little family time in there because it's been so busy and all the weekends leading up until Christmas and possibly a little after just get, every week is going to be just nuts busy so I'm going to try and shoehorn these in as much as I can and I hope there's not going to be a week that I'm going to miss but it may be a couple days off or something so just be prepared for that and lastly before we jump into it I'm going to do communion for those who wish to partake in it as I <laughs> try to do daily but fail almost daily now it is there's times and I, I take it more or less uh, every day but there's you know times where I forget to bring it to work and stuff like that so I just try to come home and do it then but times I forget so let's take the body and blood of Christ in remembrance of what he did for us Heavenly Father, we come to you today to talk about the prophetic words and the prophets of today versus the old. You know, not much has changed. If anything, it exploded a lot more. And I hope more people wake up to this. Now, we shouldn't mock the prophets and have discernments for them, but understand where they're coming from and that they are speaking and trying to be an instrument for you. We pray for Israel today and the wars that are going on over there and that no plans against the enemy will come to fruition no matter who he uses, that Hamas comes to an end and that those within Israel and the Palestinian nations are both safe and hopefully join into one accord in these coming days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Back in the old days, I keep saying that. I don't know if it has to do with Peppa Pig, with my girls watching that show. In the olden days, I just... Back in the Bible, in the Old Testament, prophets uh, came about, sometimes out of the woodwork, uh, just out of the wilderness, um, and others being called into a life of being a prophet. And I found out from last episode that uh, I guess it is called prophetess, too. I read certain uh, passages in the Bible, just this previous Bible study uh, yesterday at church, and they mentioned about a prophetess coming out. So... I, I guess it is. It does have a gender, <laughs> gender fluidity to it. So, prophets and prophetess, uh, back in the Bible, spoke either to towns, to a nation, or spoke words relating to a king or government officials. They sometimes spoke in generalized words of God to two people but more or less it was it was about god's judgment upon a nation or upon a king and giving them um warnings and it's even says that god will not make a move you know here on this earth without giving words to his prophets to speak out to these nations as as a warning or as as a message to the people i mean you look at jonah how he 
uh, almost refused to do it because he had his own discernments on going to Nineveh. He didn't want to go there. He didn't like the people there. Um, and he thought that they should just just perish. But he went and did it, uh, or he fled first and went <laughs> went to the went to the belly of the whale or the, the belly of the giant fish. Um, and uh, after being in there three days, he came out and you know went to the town and prophesied. And someone mentioned it once about Jonah, like being in there all well, the acidity of the fish's stomach or the whale's stomach pretty much would have bleached his skin white his hair would have been falling out he probably would have had like redness around the eyes and if you could just imagine some person walking up you know from the ocean and start <laughs> prophesying to these people looking like just a, a a monstrous person they they probably took heed um but that's just one example. There's there's other prophets that worked in king courts and stuff like that that spoke to to those nations' leaders. Um, you look at Daniel. You look at Jacob. You look at I mean, there's just just lists going on and on and on of different prophets speaking for that time to the nations' leaders of what God is revealing to them. And it seems in this day and age. We've kind of had a bit more of an explosion of these prophets coming out and trying to give warnings about what is going to be happening within these coming days uh, in the times we're living in right now. And back in 2020, um, when Biden won, uh, it kind of had a falling through. I mentioned this before, where I was just kind of in a stupor and a depression and stuff like that. And just flipped randomly flipped on some channels to see what was going on and I came across Flashpoint and there they were interviewing Cat Care who's like a 60 I think almost 70 year old woman now maybe in her 70s and she's got wild pink hair um, and she was talking about how all this was just the starting of something there was something else going down Trump won he would be returning but there's a process there's something that's kicking into place that is going to be used to wake up uh, not just the people of the world, but the church, because the church has been lulled to sleep by the enemy about what is going on, and they've they've lost their place on who they are, on what their spiritual gifts are. They they lost their place in believing what prophecy is anymore. Um, they lost their place in who they are as both kings and priests, and how. We need to just literally stampede right over the enemy instead of them walking all over us. It's been just a complete 180 these past couple decades of just watching America just go down and down and down and down the drain and just letting them take over piece by piece by piece in the different mountains of society, this nation. And when I first started watching Cat Care, I'm like, oh. Who is this woman? Like, oh, what's up, Pinky? You know, just like, what What do you got to say? And at, at first I thought, I don't know. I, I don't want to say she, I didn't, I didn't think she was nuts because I kind of wanted something to believe in. But I think that's what made me think she was just, you know, the, this is just a joke. Is because it was going off of what I, what I wanted and what I was hoping for. Um, and I'm like, oh, that's this, this is just wishful thinking. You know, I, I, sh I need to brush this off. And after that, within the coming days and weeks, I started f listening and hearing more of these people like Hank Kuhneman and um, Nathan French and Tim Sheets and Dutch Sheets and uh, Kent Christmas. And then slowly evolving into people like Timothy Dixon and Midnight Cry with Deborah and Julie Green. And I watched as all these people with like Manuel Johnson and Amanda Grace and uh, the list starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and soon there's just I, I'm starting to see hundreds of these prophets popping up and I'm like what's going on here I've never seen this on YouTube before it's not something that I've ever searched out it just it all of a sudden grew and I'm sure there's a bit that has to do with the algorithms on YouTube or it's, oh, you like this? Okay, we'll throw some, some more of these on here. But it, it started to grow so big that like I, I couldn't get away from it. It's like every day there was these new prophetic people coming out and speaking and saying the, the Lord is getting us ready for something. There's something happening right now. And 
I watched as these people started off one by one doing their own prophetic words. And some of them had their own ministries. Some of them were called into giving these prophetic words and like speaking out. But as time passed and as the years passed, these people started to realize they were not the only ones speaking. There actually is other prophets out there as well, too. And they started meeting these people and they started forming little um, prayer groups or like uh, festivals or gatherings where all these prophets would come and speak together and give off certain words. And they were all unified in this one voice of what God was trying to tell them. And they were all in agreement with what is going down. And they're, they're, they're starting to realize that there's something there. And it blew up to the point that now uh, Clay Clark has that Reawaken America tour where thousands upon thousands of people come uh, from all over and they do it in different states, um, but but each time they, they do it, I think they're practically sold out. It's just like it's thousands show up and they have people in the military. They have political figures. They have uh, the prophet speaking. They have um, like leaders from various faiths. And I, I don't mean that like, you know, you know, I don't think there's any Muslims that speak there, but what I mean is that different denominations. You have Catholics there, you have Pentecostal there, you have it just like there's all sorts of people from all over the world that are of a that are various Christian faiths coming and speaking, and giving their own prophetic words, and it's it's to the point that it's like it's really hard to think that this is all just a ruse. That this isn't real, that this is all fake, that this is just wishful thinking. And there's a few things that, that bring me to believe this. And one is you have people like even uh, Eric Trump and I believe Donald Trump Jr. I don't think he's been to Clay Clark, but he's speaking on other various shows with these other political figures and governmental figures who also speak at these Reawaken America tours. And um, there are people like Mike Lindell and uh, General Flynn and just the list goes on and they're in agreement with these prophets. Roseanne Barr came out and spoke too. I mean, it's, it's starting to, it's starting to get popularity. Um, people who would never have been for Trump, like, I mean, Roseanne Barr wasn't for him. She, I think she ran against him if I wasn't mistaken on some sort of socialist party, but now she's woken up since then and is now speaking, um, I guess she's a rabbi now too, but it's, it's just interesting to see all these prophetic words and people who've had dreams and visions and like, just, I, I shouldn't say, I mean, I guess it is prophetic speaking. Like when you ask a question and God gives you an answer and it's like, okay, I got the answer. Thank you for giving me that. But then if you give it out to the people, I guess technically that is a prophetic word as well too. And I've had plenty of those, which I'll probably get into uh, in a later episode because I got more prophetic ones where I do an episode about the ones that I've had and then another one which uh, I, I'm going to try and blend in with other prophets of what they've said and this being episode 10 we're about halfway through the entire series and it's we're getting into a part in a series which I'm I'm disliking because I have to take more time to do more studies into it and read up. And now I got to focus on what it is exactly that I need to bring up in these particular episodes because there's certain names I forget. There's certain prophecies that some, some people have that I, I can't remember who it was that said it. I got to go back and check and okay, it was this person that said this and then this came true and then this person said that and then, you know, that came true and I got to, I got to line them all up. And i got to do a lot of research and I just can't speak off a whim like I've been doing the last, you know, opening episodes, um, the, the, the first half. So I'm kind of doing that right now. I'm just sort of winging it again. I'm just letting my mouth ramble. And if the Lord has something to say, I allow him to just come through me and speak it. Um, and hopefully he does. <laughs> so, uh, but I'll, I'll get to those at a later date of what I've had and even a dream that I had last night, which I just, I, I still right now don't know if it's real or if it was again, just a dream. Um, apparently I had Jesus come to me last night and give me something, but it just, it, it felt real. And at the same time, it felt like he was trying to tell me something like showing me something about him, which, um, shouldn't have been a focal point 
And I think maybe I put too much focal point on it. And I think he came to me giving me that and saying, this is not important. This thing is important. And um, the way that he did it, uh, it made me, even in my dream, be like, I, I got to write this down and stuff. But when I woke up, it just felt like, wow, this, uh, I don't know. It, it felt real, but at the same time, it felt like, the things that he was, the things that I was focusing on, he was trying to have me move away from and wanted me to focus more on these particular things. And I'll get into that at a later date with all the other prophetic visions I had. Um, so it was an interesting dream. Um, but uh, again, other prophetic dreams that I've had or other visions and dreams that I've had, um, I just, I knew they were from God and I knew that they were sent because of, you know, just the things that I saw and what I was supposed to bring out and write about, um, which I did on my telegram page. And I'm not writing about this one yet because I think I need a little bit more discernment from the Lord. And it, it just, it felt, I don't know. It felt like there was something he was removing and I need to replace it with something else. And so I, I need more time of prayer before I give this particular dream out. But I also should probably um, bring up the fact that I don't think I'm a prophet in any way, shape, or form. I have dreams. I have visions. I, I, you know, I do spiritual warfare. That's probably the biggest thing that I do, especially in dreams. Forever. And the one thing that I forgot to mention in my mass monster mashing episode is that I've had dreams where I do spiritual warfare, but it's in dreams. And there's actually been plenty of tales like this. I was reading a book from Voice of the Martyrs, and I forgot the name of the book. It's probably one I should recommend, uh, where the guy went to India. And I, I believe I mentioned this too, in either the the prelude to episode seven or in episode seven, where he went to India and he was trying to preach to this one village and the village didn't like him. And there's, there was a spirit entity that was living there. And in his dream, he fought this like Gorgon lady. If you don't know what a Gorgon is, it's like Medusa from Clash of the Titans, the half half woman, half snake. And he fought her off, banished her out. And when he did, the next day, people were more open to accepting him and, and accepting Christ and stuff like that. So like the the uh, the demonic entity that was over that town, you know, was vanquished. And now he was able to go in and preach the word. So. I believe there's a lot in the ethereal world. Um, there's a spiritual world and there's, you know, this natural world, but I also believe that there's an ethereal world, which we also can indwell in dreams aren't just a deconstructing of what is going on in our minds. There's actually something there with the soul where we can battle as well. Cause the soul never sleeps. I mean, it's, it's always awake. It's always active. It's always doing something and while our body is sleeping. Our soul may be active and fighting. And there's been a lot of spiritual warfare throughout the decades that I've been through <clears throat> where I fight and either uh, remove some demonic entity or help somebody in captivity over their demonic oppression. I've even had dreams where um, I would go into, well, this isn't part of the dream, but I would go into work the next day and, um, you know, someone would say, hey, I had a dream about you. And I'd be like, oh, really? Who was I saving? And she'd go like, how'd you know that? It's like, yeah, you were there. You were almost kind of looking like some sort of priest person. You were you know, expelling demons from these two people that were under oppression. I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. Even though I don't remember it because for me, ethereal dreams are almost like the spiritual. There's, there's no time or space involved with it. So what they may have dreamed that particular night, I may not dream for a couple of years later. You know, I believe that's how the spirit works is that it's not in linear form as it is here in our natural world. But I'm, I'm going off on a tangent there, but that's just giving you an example of the dreams and visions that I've had, especially in the spiritual warfare, which uh, used to happen a lot. It doesn't happen as much anymore. There's been some stories that I could give within the past couple of years where I've had that, but not as intense as it used to be back in my 20s, which makes me feel I've either been pulled away from that or maybe I've... I've fallen through. Um, maybe God's calling me to something else. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but uh, maybe the devil doesn't think I'm much of a threat to him anymore. Maybe it's because I'm becoming more lax in my faith. It could be that. I have no idea. Um, but I think a lot of people are being called to this lately. This is why we've seen such an uptick in prophetic words and people coming out of the, the woodwork, literally, and just going to town on 
all these words every single day. There's a new prophetic word, and it's not just from one person. There's like countless ones to the point that now, back in 2020, I would be able to somewhat get a couple hours in. Like I said, this is why I put everything on double speed because I can actually hear it. To, to me, it almost sounds like normal speed. And when I go to normal speed, it sounds too slow. So I got to speed it up. But I, I would be able to do that and I'd be able to get in like eight to 10 hours of study when I was at work, which is actually probably closer to 16 to 20 hours of study at work because I would sped it up and I get all these words. And now it's getting to the point that today I just, there's so many of them. I, I just can't keep up. Some of these people are doing like four or five prophetic words a day now it used to be just like one now it's just like a, a whole litany of them and that's just one person and then you times that by probably you know the the 50 of them that i personally watch and it's just been an explosion of words and it's like this is this is getting outrageous i can't even keep up and i, I can't say because a lot of prophets are like there's going to be so much information coming out your head will spin i can't say that my head is spinning so much as i just don't have the time anymore i have a new job i can't sit at the office like i did with the insurance and pretty much all i was doing was just answering the phone and paying the bills so i had a lot of downtime to watch all these videos now i barely have any time at all and i feel kind of i shouldn't say god's pulling me away from it but i think he's trying to have me focus and hone in more it's like you want to watch these videos but you need to hone in exactly on a particular group of people that you know you trust you know you can focus in on you know that they're going to give the words that you need to hear because there's there's such a broad array of prophets out there that speak to different people for different situations on what the lord is calling them to do and it's like i don't need to watch all of them you know there's there's just there's some certain words certain prophetic words that god is speaking to everyone in a generalization but he's also speaking focally to certain people about certain situations about certain areas and it's like I don't need to be part of that. I need to focus in on what the Lord is calling me to focus in on. And I think we need to do that too, because there's so much information going out there. Not only that, but we need to be aware that there are a lot of wolves in sheep's, sheep's clothing and the devil is going to play this game. If he realizes and starts to catch on that people are listening to what God is saying through these prophetic words, he's going to throw out his own false prophets and start giving out words that don't sound right. They, they, they kind of mesh, but there's a lot of falsity to it there's there's just a lot of like that doesn't sound right it's starting to lead people away and turn them away to what the focal point is of what god is calling them to do and i've been catching on to that a lot as well where it starts off good and you're starting to you're listening to it and it's like okay i i see what they're saying but <clears throat> then it starts to go astray and lead you off into this like it starts to bring in more fear and worry and anxiety than it does help and peace and calmness that the lord gives when he gives his prophetic words and you can tell that they're trying to lead people astray so we need to have discernment in this time as well not just to listen to the prophets but to have discernment and understand and know exactly what the lord is calling you to do and know which ones are correct know which ones are not correct even if some people have the sincerity of the heart they may be being fooled by certain demonic entities and i think about this all the time like uh, like how my videos are like uh, am, am i doing the right thing am i saying the right words i don't want to lead people astray i want to lead them closer but i know i'm throwing a lot of my own discernments and problems and worries into the situation it's a whole reason why i started up these videos because if you think that i'm making these videos because i think that i'm righteous and better than anyone else you have a complete misunderstanding of why i'm doing these videos i'm doing it because of the opposite reason i'm doing it because i'm trying to show you my flaws and show you the trouble that i'm going through and show you the trials and the tribulations and to let you know that you're not the only person out there that's going through this um <clears throat> especially if you're struggling in this day and age with the prophets and the waiting and all the about twos and the soons and the nows which just seem to perpetuate and just go on and on and on and months later they're still talking about it and you're just like what is going on lord you know there's a lot of stuff that's happening in the spiritual we're not seeing it right now but sooner or later that veil is going to get ripped off our eyes and we're going to see it for exactly what it is and we'll be praising and glorifying it in that day but right now it's just like i you have no idea how badly i just want to punch people like I hate to say it, but sometimes even God, it's, it's just sometimes I get so furiated, you know, it's just frustrated and, and angered at, at what's going down, at what we're not seeing, at what I, I keep trying to pray into, at what I'm trying to be in agreement with, with the Lord. And it's just like, it just perpetuates and it just keeps going and going and going and going and it just doesn't end and it just never stops. And it's just like, 
it's hard for me to find that peace, that leaning into the Lord, that just resting in him, because it just seems like it's a constant go and a constant battle. <laughs> and I think a lot of the prophets, as uh, happy as some of them are in expressing it to you, as trying to get the word out and being joyous and, and cheerful about what God is doing, I think a lot of them struggle with their words, and they probably get a lot of... Um, a lot of retaliation from people that, that are, oh, you said this was going to happen and it hasn't happened yet. Nothing's going down. And they must have a constant battle of not just fighting with what the Lord is trying to say and them trying to get it out. Because a lot of them, from what I know, they do this thing called journaling where they just write what the journal, you know, write what the Lord says or just let them speak. And then they don't even realize it half the time what the Lord is saying. They actually have to go back in their videos and listen themselves and be like, wow, did I just say that? The Lord just gave that to me. I don't even remember half of the stuff I said. So they got to fight with that. And then they got to fight with the interpretation of the word. Then they got to fight against the people who don't believe the word. Then they got to fight against the people who do believe the word, but are in just constant stress and worry and battle fatigue. And I, I do feel bad for them. I think we need to pray for the prophets, um, especially the ones who are, are really in depth and really fighting within this battle and are, are just getting, getting bombarded from all sides, including their own brethren. And it's, people wonder why I'm so worn out uh, the best way that I can say it and I, I think the best way that I could probably maybe emphasize it for the prophets as well or some of these people who understand what is going on in the world today and they're fighting like the ones in the military and the ones in the politics and the ones that are in constant battle to try and do what is right that are part of the white hats that are that are part of this this movement uh, with what God is doing and being in agreement with him and trying to take action is that of like World War One or even even World War Two, where it wasn't just a constant barrage <clears throat> of a particular military group going in and, and trying to overcome the enemy. They had a rotation. They would go in, they'd fight for like a week, and then they'd rotate those people out so they wouldn't get battle fatigue, put in new people, and keep that constant, you know, Re recuperation rejuvenation coming so that when they were fit they would go back into battle these people would come out you know and there was just there was a rotation going well i think in this battle especially in the spiritual warfare battle that we are in we're not getting the rotation because half the people don't believe what is happening half the church is still asleep or if they're not asleep they're they don't believe in what the prophetic word is coming out and saying right now and so they're not in agreement with it. And because they're not in agreement with it, they're not stepping in and giving us time to rest so that they can intercede and declare a decree and fight against this battle with us. So it's people who are on these front lines that are battling um, and, and giving these words and, you know, being in agreement with what God is calling us to do and trying to declare a decree, but we're doing it for months and months and months and months and years now. And it's going in just since like 2020 or even just slightly before. Some people like myself have known about this for, for decades, but I haven't been, you know, like interceding or doing prayers or anything like that. I, I just knew the government was bad. I knew what they were trying to do. I see the evil that was going on. I knew it was Luciferian. And I try and tell people about it. But it wasn't such a strong battle fatigue of fighting against it um, like I am now where uh, I understand who we are in God. We're supposed to be kings and priests and soldiers and warriors and we're supposed to be fighting against it. So it's a constant barrage of battle. Um, and some of these people, all they're doing is fighting, just constant fighting, constant, nonstop, no recuperation, no rejuvenation, no reinforcements, no, no help, no supplies coming in, nothing. It's just, it's just constant focus of fighting all the time, nonstop. And I, I could see why some of us are battle weary and some of us are worn out and some of us just want to wave the flag because the other half of the people, it'd be like if it was in World War II and Nazi Germany was taken over and half of the people that were fighting the Nazis just went, we don't believe this is going on. We're not going to stand for it. We're just going to go back home and, you know, sleep and, and leaving the other half to just fight constantly, nonstop. So yeah, I I think I think they are weary. I think they're joyous in what the Lord is doing, and I'm happy. I'm looking forward to seeing what He's doing, even though I get angered a lot in the waiting. Um, just because I'm trying to put out these videos, I'm trying to warn people, I'm trying to tell them. I see other prophets trying to do the same. I see other messengers of God getting visions and dreams and trying to tell people what is going on, and they're just flat out not believing it.
And so it's like, not only are we fighting against the enemy and the opposition in the natural, we're fighting against our own brethren in our church that won't even stand up and help us. And it's just like, we're just beaten down to the ground and exhausted all the time. Um, and I know I'm, I'm not sounding very uplifting right now, but it's just, I think it's part of the warfare that we have to go through. And I, I feel bad for a lot of the prophets because one of the reasons why is, is a lot of the people in this day and age, the brethren do not believe that prophecy exists anymore. They believe it is done in a way with because of one Bible verse, which I'm going to read right now. And I think that's the one that some people should really start um, maybe reevaluating and be like, okay, this, this sounds like maybe we've been looking at it wrong and I'm going to do it right now. It's so sorry if it's bright and just opening it up first Corinthians. And it was the verse that I posted up, but I'm going to read eight through 13 and just go through that whole section so that you can get an idea of what I'm trying to say. And it says love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease where there are tongues, they will be restrained. Where there is knowledge, it will be dismissed. For we know in part and prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial passes away. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. And when I became a man, I set aside childish ways. Now we see but a dim reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully even as I am known fully. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. <clears throat> now what Paul was mentioning there is we know in part, we prophesy in part. This is what I'm trying to get at. The world is still going. Have, do you know everything? Do you fully know everything under the sun? Or do you just know in part right now? Let's say you understand maybe, as Kantoven said, uh, half of everything. Do you know half of everything? Well, no. Well, could it be that maybe God is hiding in the other half that you don't know about? Now, he was talking to an atheist about that in you know, respect to God and him not believing God. But I think the same works for prophecy. Like, do you know everything? Well, no. Well, then you're not done with prophecy because they go hand in hand. Prophecy is the foreknowledge of what God is giving you warning of or a message of, on a, you know, upon a future date where he went ahead of you, did everything. Now is coming back and telling you, I have done this. Go forth, spread the word, let people know. Um, <clears throat> but until Jesus comes and we are fully made aware of everything, we come face to face, face and we are fully, you know, we, we fully know because we are fully known. It's like we see God and we are like him. We will be full of knowledge. There will be no need for tongues anymore. And there will be no need for prophecy anymore. But we haven't reached that point yet. We're still going on this on this plane. We're still trying to live within God's plan and taking over so that Christ can come, be unified with the bride, and we'll have the thousand year reign of Christ and we'll, you know, have the new heaven, new earth, all that stuff. But we're we're not even there yet. We're not even I shouldn't say remotely close, as Manuel Johnson said, Jesus told him, We are in uh, the end times, but not the end of time. That's what he said. So we still have a ways to go. But until we reach that ending point, we still need to gain knowledge. We still need to have prophecy. We still speak in tongues. There's still a battle going on. We just don't, you know, blow everything off because we think that prophecy was for a bygone era. No, God is no respecter of man. He is eternal. He never changes. He, sp he spoke then and he's speaking now. And we need to listen to these prophetic words. <clears throat> I think the minute that we realize that these prophecies are coming to pass, and there have been many within the past couple of years, a lot of prophecies that have been coming to pass, you'll realize that the Lord is trying to wake you up and realize that there's a war going on and that he is trying to speak to you through these prophets. He's trying to give you warning and he's trying to supply you and he's trying to give you edification and he's trying to give you the weapons and the skills and the assets and the gifts needed for this time. 
And once you realize that and you start listening to what the prophets are saying, what you're getting prepared for and what you need to be aware of and where you can look and get even not edification, but just a, a reassurance of what is happening because of the words God is putting out to these prophets and then they actually happen, you can follow through even greater and speak into it and these prophecies will become stronger and the world will be managed a lot easier. But I think we need half the church to come in on this because uh, they're they're just they're not they're not aware or they're not awake or they're just not in agreement with what the prophets are saying. So, and a lot of them I can't blame them because of the theology, because of the the doctrines of faith that they were brought up with, and thinking that there is no more prophecy, that there is no more tongues, that half these gifts are done away with. And it's a ridiculous thing to think of because we're still not at the end game. In fact, if anything, they're needed more now than they were back then, like an exponential amount, because we're entering into those last times where we need to ramp up our game. And half the stuff that was going on back then, we don't even believe in anymore. And we're not using. Um, and I'm not saying every church, like, you know, just jump right into this and just start doing it and start dancing around speaking in tongues and stuff like that. But you need to, at least at minimal amounts, accept what is going on and accept that there is a prophet maybe amongst your church or there is someone that can speak tongues. And you, you need to start just don't blow them off and shut them out because the Lord is trying to speak to you through them. And you're plugging your ears and going, la, 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 la. You know, it's it's not time for that we need to start focusing on exactly what needs to be done and the gifts that god is trying to give us and to actually use them and <clears throat> i think i'm going to leave it there because i'm not sure what else to really bring up in this particular segment because there's other prophetic words that i'm going to be getting into in later episodes and i just wanted to run down more or less the prophecies of uh, prophets of old versus today and how everyone thinks that it's, it's it's just weird how they can read the bible and believe the prophets then but then not believe the prophets now because it almost feels like those universal horror movies you know we're in a sophisticated age we don't believe in monsters anymore or, you know we're 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 a we're in a age of science we don't believe all this mumbo jumbo of spirituality and stuff like that and that's that's for a bygone era when people didn't believe in it it's like you need to start focusing on exactly what it is you believe in when it comes to your faith and christianity and what god is trying to do and how he still uses a supernatural aspect because he is a supernatural being and we need to start using those gifts and we need to or at least even if we don't use them accept them from others when they are given to them to increase the body of christ and make way for our lord and savior jesus christ for when he comes prepare the people and i hope this has helped a little bit i haven't had enough coffee yet i got my coffee right here i haven't had one sip yet have i there you go We need to start at minimal accepting these words. Take it up with discernment. You know, if somebody's given a prophetic word, ask the Lord about it, use your discernment, um, and then speak into it. Either accept it, acknowledge it as word of God, pray into it, declare and decree and be in agreement with it, or ring it off as a hoax. One of the two, but at the very least, start paying attention to what's going on. I hope this has helped you. And I will give a book recommendation now. So my book recommendation, and this is going to be a weird one because I haven't finished it yet. I'm, I'm just, I'm just getting through it now, but it's so good that I'm actually going to recommend it right out, out of the shoot because I'm fairly certain the rest of it is going to be awesome. And it's Chuck Norris, Black Belt Patriotism. Uh, <clears throat> I, I just, I just need to take a quick look and see. When he did this, it's 2010. <clears throat> so he wrote this over a decade ago. And it speaks to today. It's it's just wild how just on spot it is to the stuff he was writing about and where our country was going and just all, all the warning signs. And now we're in it. And this book just speaks just 
almost prophetically in its own sense. I would highly recommend it. Um, I haven't finished it myself, uh, but just getting as far as I did, I'm like, you know what, this is going to be my next book recommendation because they have to jump into this. I'm actually doing it through audiobooks right now um, on Audible with, with Amazon so I could I can get through it faster because again I listen a lot faster I'll put it on that double speed and I'll just fly right through it um, really good uh, definitely worth the read I, I try actually I don't try I'm sorry I, I don't try at all to line up the books with um, the episodes uh, if I did I'd be hunting forever for certain books that tie into the you know the actual episodes that I'm doing um, I have books everywhere I have a library over here as you can see it goes all along the wall and then we got more books out there and we got more books you know in, in the other rooms and there's just books everywhere so <clears throat> half the books I'm looking for I can't find and there's books out in the garage <laughs> so I gotta dig through all of them just to find the ones that I'd want to tie into the episodes and I just gave up on that I'm like I'm not even gonna do I'm just gonna recommend the books and if they tie into a certain episode I'll bring that up during the book recommendation like okay so this one it would be good with this episode but I didn't do it during that episode because I couldn't find it so <laughs> just just a fair warning don't think that that really ties into the prophetic word though in a sense it kind of does because uh, in a political sense he spoke almost prophetically to what is going down today and this is like a 10 13 year old book so worth the read person next that I'm going to recommend that you watch is uh, Midnight Cry with Deborah. She's really good. She's uh, she and Jojo Dawson. If, if I could throw books at people, it would be them. Not because they're wrong, but because they actually speak the word and it, it does convict your spirit. And it's just like, Ooh, you, want to, you know, it just angers me sometimes the things that they have to say. But I suppose in the long run, that's a good thing because she does speak the word. She speaks from her heart. She speaks what God is wanting her to say. She does get it down pat and straightforward and does have that uh, stern love. I think it's probably the best way to explain it. She's got like the stern love attitude. So does Jojo Dawson. He's he's a little bit more um, on, on the not motivational speaker, but kind of the let's get it done, Tyler, get her done type of attitude while she's just more of the stern love and just goes straight straight in for the kill. So um, as much as it irks me sometimes to listen to her speak, again, that is a good thing because she has convicted my heart on quite a few subjects and it has changed me um, quite a bit listening to her on what I should be doing and how I should focus in uh, with the Lord. So I highly recommend her as well too. Um, and I guess that's it. Uh, I hope some of you have been listening to some of the prophets. If not, I highly suggest them. Just go through all the episodes and I give a rec recommendation at the end. Most of them are prophets or watchmen on the wall, such as myself, who listen to the prophets and then pay attention to what is going on in the world so I can reiterate them to other people and be like, okay, this happened here. We need to start paying attention to this. You know, be ready, be, you know, armed up and ready to go. So, um, and I guess that's it. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for our time together. And I hope I have reached at least one person, if not many others, during this time. Something tells me I'm making these videos pre-advanced. I don't want to say prematurely, but just kind of like uh, putting them out. And then once things start hitting the fan, that people are going to start recognizing them and start coming to Christ to you or coming to you um, from them. So uh, just... I hope this helps. I hope I'm not leading people astray like some of the false prophets are these days and that we all come to Christ and come into agreement with your plan of what is going down today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, that is it for now. I need I need dire coffee. It's been a very busy weekend and each week, again, as I said, from here on until Christmas is just going to get more intense, more crazy, just way more wild. So um, very busy. So uh, sleep is a joke especially considering that i'm you know doing battling and having weird visions and dreams and sleep anyways it's just a constant go for me <laughs> so hopefully the coffee will help maybe i need to stop somewhere and just get an actual espresso so but from that i hope you guys have a good week um stay strapped in the lord and god bless